One of my, one of my favorite people in all of volleyball is Hugh McCutcheon. And I've had the pleasure to know him for a few years in his last year as the Olympic coach. And now as he starts his fifth year as the head coach of the Minnesota women's team, he um, had a great run last year, made it to the national semifinals with a fabulous team. And even though you lost your big gun in Dally Santana, you got a heck of a group coming back. So you got to be pretty excited. Yeah, I mean, it, it's uh, it's been quite a journey with this group. And to their credit, they've, they've worked very hard and it's nice to see them getting some great return on that investment. But yeah, you know, 2016, it'll be a, a different team, but I'm excited to see how they develop. Um, that was so exciting, the, the run that you had. And what's really cool is how many Minnesota players you have, like uh, the Tap Sisters, uh, Samantha, Sellers, yeah. Sons in the Setter, uh, Molly Lohman. Um, I'm, I'm thinking, I know there's somebody else in your yeah, running. Uh, Will Height, yeah, yeah. And, yeah Will Height. And then, you know, they're all from Minnesota. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's pretty, pretty amazing. Yeah, I mean, uh, Minnesota's a, a very strong volleyball state. And, uh, you know, it's great when, when the best kids in the state want to stay at home. You know, that's that's wonderful for us. Uh, we certainly, uh, as the only Division One school in the state, feel like we have a, a responsibility to, to represent. So it's great when they want to be a part of our program. Um, I didn't mention, too, uh, Dolly Rosado, your, your libero. She's from Puerto Rico. But yeah. that's five really nice players coming back. And you guys sent 12 to the USAB College um, I don't know what you call it, national team tryouts. Tryout, yeah, yeah. yeah. 12, 12 players, Hugh. That's the most in the country. The rich get richer. Well, I don't know if anyone was keeping score, but, you know, we, we um, you know, when we're talking to our athletes, you know, a lot of people that come here not, uh, are not just wanting a great college volleyball experience. They they want to go on and do things beyond college. And um, and certainly we we think we know a little bit about what happens after college, just professional national team, all the different experiences that we've had. And um, so to that end, um, you know, having that experience of going to the national team tryout, seeing what other people in the country are doing, playing in, with different coaches and different drills. And I don't know, just um, getting that experience, um, I think is absolutely congruent with, with, you know, what we're saying about, Hey, you know, we want you to be great here. Uh, have a great college experience, graduate, get your degree. And then, um, you know, like I said, a lot of them want to go on and do things in volleyball beyond college. So we're just trying to stay true to what we say. Well, I can imagine it's a pretty good pitch coming from Hugh McCutcheon, the former men's Olympic coach and women's Olympic coach, and then the great staff you have, you know, and, uh, you know, you, you can schmooze with the best of them. So I imagine you're pretty good in the living room. <laughs> schmooze. All I'm trying to do is, uh, you know, do what I say and say what I do kind of thing. I mean, we're, we're just trying to be consistent. Well, we mentioned all those players who are coming back, and you know that's such a great core group. Tell me about your incoming freshmen and who might be impact uh, from the beginning. Well, it's uh, I think a really interesting time for our program because there will be a lot of competition across all positions this year. And um, you know, uh, Reagan Pittman in the middle, Alexis Hart on the outside, and Brittany McLean on the outside, and a uh, uh, defensive player Lauren Litzow who's going to come in, and all four of them can can have an impact immediately. Um, the experience of making it to the the final fours we're not allowed to call it that's basketball only yeah but, i think we're the national semifinals i think is yeah, right. exactly yeah. nonetheless as one of those four remaining teams getting in that spotlight and having that run through the ncaa tournament all the pressures that go with it and then of course being in that environment um what do you think that does for those uh, returning starters that we talked about and then what they can pass on to those new kids it's wonderful experience you know as tough as it was to lose that that match uh, there are a ton of lessons that we can learn and, uh, you know, hopefully weave those into the, the culture moving forward. And, and um, you know, as we've always said, there's a opportunity in adversity. And, and uh, as much as you want to uh, let your athletes know, like, hey, at some point it's going to get big. And at some point, it, you know, the, you've got to be able to be at your best when your best is needed and all that stuff. Um, telling them is one thing, but having that experience is, of course, a whole different deal. And, uh, it's it's not a, a mystery that experiences the teacher, right? And um, now that they've had that, hopefully uh, they'll be a little bit better, uh, you know, next time we get there. Yeah, opportunity and adversity. I wish more people would understand that. Anyway, yeah, well, it yeah. seems to be we're, we're doing, a, we're trying to, well, I don't know about now. It seems there's more and more research about the importance of failure. But for a while there, it sure seemed like everyone was trying to insulate their kids from failing at anything. And I, I don't think it's uh, got them a good return. Well, I'm glad to hear you say that. And I got some volleyball girls. I want to watch that. Anyhow, <laughs> let's switch gears completely since it's uh, an Olympic year. Um, Rio looms and our two teams are both, it seems to be in a great place. I mean, yeah. a fantastic 
um, victory in Japan. The women took a while to qualify, but for a while there, they were they were so good. Just thoughts about both teams as they head into the uh, the home stretch of the quadrennial, if you will. Yeah, it's an exciting uh, it's exciting run here for both teams. I I, I think uh, both coaching staffs have done a phenomenal job with their athletes. Seems like they're playing good systems and they've gotten better every year. Um, a, a wonderful victory for the men at the World Cup. Uh, you know, that's a, a huge deal. That tournament is by far, at least in my opinion, the, the hardest tournament of the quadrennial. Um, so to win it was uh, was a great achievement. And uh, on the women's side, they were right there as well. And, uh, you know, so, uh, you know, qualifying is the, is the beast. I mean, that's the gorilla on your back the whole four years is punching your ticket to the show. And, you know, then once you qualified, you can worry about winning the thing. But um, you know, once, okay, they came up a little short at the World Cup, you know, that, that, that's, it happens. If it were under the old rules of the World Cup where the top three would have qualified, which is the way it's been for the last, well, I don't know, ever since the tournament's inception, the women would have qualified there. So they weren't like, uh, you know, far away, but then obviously to come home and to, you know, win that qualifier in such a commanding fashion was, you know, great. And you know, we talked earlier about this idea of opportunity and adversity. And, and um, you know, I know when, when uh, I was coaching the USA men, uh, we, we got fourth at the World Cup. We were right there and we had a chance to beat Russia. And we lost in five. Had we won, we would have gone and we lost. And it was, uh, it was heartbreaking. It was tough. However, the opportunity in all of that was that we got to play the qualifier in Puerto Rico, uh, you know, in January. And we got a great three weeks together as a team that we wouldn't have had otherwise. And so there were some things that happened in that tournament that allowed us to become the team we were in 2008. So, you know, I, I don't think, uh, you know, the national team staff would, as much as they want to have the qualifying done at the World Cup, I don't think they minded getting their athletes back, getting another chance to kind of reinforce the culture, work on some technical stuff, work on their systems, and, of course, you know, play a great tournament in front of a great crowd um, here at home. Well, I'll tell you what, the frame of reference from where that all comes from a guy who has done what you have done in the volleyball world, I, I think is almost unparalleled. And uh, it's an honor and a privilege to uh, call you a friend and to be able to visit with you um, for this. And uh, I, lo I look forward to the many, many people who will get to see this and hear what you have to say. Right on. Hey, the feeling's mutual, man. Thanks for the time and uh, all the best, Mike.